What's the deal, family? My name is Darius Berry, and I'm here with Ms. Deja McKinney, and I am a real estate investor. I've been investing in real estate for about four years right now, purchased over 13 properties, and I'm also a general contractor. Yep, and as you said, I'm Deja McKinney, uh, currently working with Darius as his property manager and project manager, and just a good business associate, I would say. In fact, business partner. <laughs> she always wanted to try to make it seem like that, but we are business partners, even though we, we got two separate companies. So, we, we purchased the house, so what, the, what this video is, is a recap. It's a recap of our redevelopment project. So we want to pretty much give people insight to some of the challenges that we had and some of the concerns that we had so we can be able to add value to some of your development projects. So we're going to start off with how we purchased the property. So yeah. that was kind of Deja's role. She kind of <laughs> found the property, so I'm going to just kind of let her dive into that a little bit yeah so we just went to the market to find something that was cost effective but mm -hmm. also had some form of value in it especially after repair value facts um we then looked at the home uh simply by setting up a showing yep. and we made sure that we had contractors available so we knew automatically what we would be spending pretty much yep. to come up with a budget yeah and i wasn't even there actually like i was actually at work yeah and Dave was like i so i got access to the mls as well and i just was kind of going through it like i showed days this property she was like bet let's go look at it we <laughs> checked it out um one of the biggest things was making sure the arb was right so we got the property at 17.5 they initially wanted what 20 grand for it yeah yeah and we wasn't paying on 20 grand. We actually offered them 15. We should have stuck to the 15, but <laughs> they ended up countering and we ended up getting it for 17.5. So we took it, right? Under 20 is still a good bet. Under 20 was a good bet because initially our first extra strategy was to come into to this prop. It was to fix and flip it, right? But I would say this is our our biggest fix and flip that we've done. This far. This far, right? <laughs> so this was like groundbreaking for us like we we had ideas in our head but once you get into these projects and you start dealing with different contractors and you getting different opinions i feel like your perspective changes and, and that's kind of what happened here i think also time like mm -hmm. i think initially when we had an understanding of what time we wanted to spend on investing yeah. in this property things change so when the market changes sometimes you have to change your strategy facts and then we started looking at comps and we was like all right what's comparable on the market and we was like what we're trying to do and and with the margins that we're trying to get for this property we're gonna have to do a lot more because yeah. we had the old uh plaster not plaster walls but we had the old texture walls yeah. and a lot of the properties that were on market that were going for that high arv had the sleek uh nice corners drywall and we're Modern. like we're gonna our arv is gonna come in at least 20 to twenty five thousand less than what we want so yeah. we got to put in the work to get that price margin <clears throat> Um, so to fund the deal, right? So I come in as the investor. I come in as the investor, the contractor, and developer. So mainly I fund all the deals. I, I figure out some strategic financing. With this deal, I had a line of credit and I had a, so I had a line of credit for 50 grand and I had a, a, a credit card for 25 grand. Credit card, the line of credit went towards actually acquiring a property and the 25 grand went towards, you know, actually buying the materials and, and putting the work in. And of course, any excess that I needed, I could still pull from the line of credit. So that was one of the strategic ways that we knew that, you know, we could go into this project and fund our deal. So I'm now we're at the point in the project where we have a property. Now we got to figure out, all right, we, no, we came up with a property, right? Now we're trying to figure out our extra strategy. Yeah. So now we're like, all right, extra strategy is fix and flip. All right, so now, we're at the point where we're at the rehab process. We got the money, now we're at the rehab process. Now we're at the point of finding contractors. Yeah, and I think it's a hit or miss with contractors sometimes, because you'll have people that you trust. Yeah. And in the stage <laughs> that we were at, we yeah. had dealt with numerous of contractors before, you know, individual projects, but mm -hmm. we, we were really looking for people that we could potentially put on payroll or just keep on the roster so that you have people that are reliable. Yeah, and accountable and knew what they were doing. And so we, for us, we like people to be experts at what they do. Yeah. Like, we don't want contractors to just to be like, like we got a vision, of course, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we want people to be like, I'm an expert at this and I like what y'all doing, but let me add, I can add value with my expertise, right? Yeah. I think in Detroit, <laughs> a lot of people wanna 
be good at everything. Man, <laughs> what you good at? I mean, I could do it all. <laughs> Plumbing, electrical, like, you know, but it's good to find somebody that has a specialty because yeah. they will perfect in that, you know? Facts. And like one of our main, one of our, like, we don't even ask what you do no more. It's like, what do you me, like to do? What do you like to do and what are you good at? <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, everybody can do it all, but we don't want everybody that can do it all because we're going to hire you to do the exact same thing on every project because we yeah. know you can do it. And one tip that I have for contractors that I've realized through this project is have proof of your work. Yeah. I mean, your word is bond, which we all try to go on trust, but have proof of your work. Have pictures, Facts. even if it's an Instagram, even if it's a, yeah. uh, what is it called, a Dropbox. Yeah. Just have something that shows work. Take pictures of it. It takes Facts. five seconds to take pictures of something. Yeah. And that's one thing that we kind of struggle with, but we found some good and, <laughs> and some bad contractors. And we're going to get one. into all that too. <laughs> it was it, it was funny, but it was like, this was lessons that we needed to learn. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I appreciate this journey. Like, we're going to get into it. So. Yeah. We're at the point where we've done our due diligence, right? Yeah. Like we're on, we on a game. We got contracts, contracts that lay out payment schedules, scope of works, uh, liability, license on file. Like, like we like to do stuff to the T and not like cut corners. Yeah. You know, payment schedules, how you gonna get paid? Uh, we didn't pay anybody fifty percent up front. Like I would not recommend paying any contractor fifty percent up front for anything. Well, I think just find what works for you, you know, um, <laughs> 50 percent up front is a risky. I think that's yeah. why not necessarily because you can't. It's just risky. You pay somebody 50 yeah. percent up front and then they expect payment at the end. But things may happen in between. So it could be a loss of money. So just find a schedule that really works for you. Um, there's some contractors that tell the um, there's some investors that tell the actual contractor what mm -hmm. they're getting paid. Okay. Um, there yeah. are some different forms of met, you know, method of payment where you're only getting twenty percent up front, or if you're getting the set yeah. amount. So just find a flow that really works for your business and mm -hmm. that your contractor is okay with. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you what we did. <laughs> we did. We 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 separated the payments into threes. Which was a which was pretty much thirty three percent a payment essentially, yeah. And then we that so that was a down payment, and then we paid in pro progress payments. Um, and the reason that that was beneficial to us because we had to fire some contractors. Yeah. So imagine if we would have paid them fifty percent, and now we got to fire you. How are we gonna recoup that money? A lot of times you just got to take that in. It's a loss. It's right. a loss. You know. Right. Yeah, you can go to court, but. That's a lengthy process in itself. Yeah, and you spend more money. Man. <laughs> so one of the contractors that we had to fire, um, after we did our due diligence, we vetted everybody. Like we literally vetted everybody. We did our due diligence and we got to the point where we were like, all right, let's start working. We met a guy um, that I felt like tried to talk us, mm -hmm. talk around us. Real slick. Real slick. And I think we, we knew, but we wanted to really give him a chance. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I really wanted to give him a chance. And Dave was just like, man. I wanted to fire him before he man. started. And I'm just like, let's give him a chance, you know? Just go with your first gut. Facts. Go with your first gut. <laughs> if they show him red flies of uh, red, red flies. <laughs> red, <laughs> red, red flags. Red, you you got to think about it. <laughs> if they show him red flags up front, man, I say, <laughs> Go with your first gut. Like some of the red flags he showed us, he was just like, um, his quote was like kind of awkward. Like he priced really, really high on something that didn't cost that much and some of the other things he priced low. So he was betting that he was going to get the whole job. So he just kind of gave us a price. <sighs> yeah. And you'll find that a lot of contractors, they do that. Like they essentially want to give you discounts so that they get more volume or more business. Yeah. But don't always go with the low contractor and don't mm -hmm. always go with the high contractor. You know, just find something like a little bit in the middle. Yeah. Um, and one thing that you always taught me during the well, period mm -hmm. is to be a little bit knowledgeable about what you're actually yeah. having them bid on. Yeah. So that they don't over price gouge you or yep. even undercharge you, too. Because yep. there are some people that gave us lower prices, but we gave them more money. Yeah, because it just didn't make sense. We like, yeah. how can you do it for that price? You really, <laughs> like, you, you pretty much cutting yourself literally nothing, and you're gonna come to the end of the project asking us for money. Yeah, and so, that's what most of them do. <laughs> literally, so the contractor that we had to fire, we fired. 
like the first red flag, he was just trying to charge us for it. He had a change order for everything. Mm -hmm. And after we wrote out a scope of work, this is what we said. And, and this is what we learned. Like we learned like to literally, literally be more detailed on the scope of work. Like literally, like lay down, you know, eight by 11 ceramic tiles, like detail. detail. So they know exactly what they're doing because we wrote out a scope of work was pretty much saying like remove floor, remove kitchen floor, uh, put down backer boards and when he noticed that one of the things he highlighted was that there was an extra floor down there. He pulled up one floor and he was like, it's an extra floor up on here. So we tried to charge us for that. Then he just was like, oh, I, not, I pulled the first wall off. If you want me to tear the second wall off, that's an extra for that. And it was just like. His, like I, I give him kudos, you yeah. know, for, for saying what he wants to get paid for. But first of all, he, he was charging us for things that were ridiculous. Yes. And then he also, Mm -hmm. decided to subcontract yeah. something, did not speak with us, yeah. and supposedly paid like triple what we would have paid yeah. for something like that. So he definitely disrespected us by not reaching out to the people that hired him prior mm -hmm. to him making those type of decisions. It was just enough. And he was very disrespectful. Like the way yeah. that he spoke, spoke to us was... That's when we needed to cut him off. It was just too much. We asked him to do a plumbing job. And he did a actually a, horrible job. It was horrible. <laughs> he did it completely wrong after we found out. And and this is I already knew it was wrong. Yeah. I said like I was like no we're gonna have to get this. I knew it wasn't gonna pass inspection. I was yeah. like we're gonna have to get this passed. DTE gonna come out gonna have to come out here and then pass and redo this. it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> immediately when I looked at it because I've had plumbing done on the house before and I knew what was right. So I looked at it and was like this is absolutely wrong. This is not gonna pass. Somebody's at the door. That's my cousin. <laughs> Give us one second. Oh, you want to finish the record? Yeah, the we fire? just fired the contractor. So we fired him uh, because he did a bold job and yeah. then he was, he was expecting payment. Yeah. And we're like, I knew it was wrong. I'm like, I just want somebody else to say it's wrong because I know it's wrong. And uh, I'm like, I'm not going to pay you until the job is done. And he wanted full payment. I'm like, so he pretty much thought that we were trying to cheat him on his money. And we're like, no, we know this job is wrong, but I, I'm going to let somebody else tell you that it's wrong because you literally trying to, I think he was really just trying to get over. Yeah, I think at he, the end of the day, he was just, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was, but Darius and I are very reasonable. Like, yeah. I don't think that we are unreasonable business associates and we work with a lot of people so yeah but the most part if he would have handled the situation a little bit differently we could have probably dealt with it a lot better than versus mm -hmm. firing him but yeah um what do you say slow hire fire fast yeah <laughs> slow hire fire fast i'm like he's over <laughs> he's yeah done. we should have just went with our first mind um but there were situations where we um had contractors that messed up but they took accountability and yeah and we were able to kind of deal with it in different ways that's another thing that i want to talk about like um how we that one of the contracts they did take accountability they didn't want to at first <laughs> so we had a roof get done so you're gonna look at pictures of the house and the roof had to be redone or it was the old wood shake roof you can't keep that stuff the roof was falling apart we literally had water damage in like three corners mm -hmm. of the house because of water just continuously dripping down dripping right down. so we had a roof get done uh we we were being strategic we were like all right we're gonna try to do the roof after the rainy season we thought it was done raining we started in april yeah it wasn't done raining it rained for another month yeah and um go ahead i was just gonna say 2019 overall like the weather was just yeah. crazy you know sometimes you can predict predict certain rehabs and know when it's a good time to execute but in mm. michigan it's kind of tricky yeah <laughs> I, I think that was definitely was the what, what, what was what caught us up so one of the contractors uh they couldn't finish the roof well they started the roof they tore it all off because it was a sunny bright day and <laughs> two days later it started raining yeah. but they didn't tarp it right nope so they they did a they did a half job tarping it down so of course literally yeah. half they only tarped half the house the tarp blew off the first time <laughs> and then he had to go and put it back on and he still didn't put it on the right way so we had a whole upstairs uh bedrooms get soaked rain and we're talking about the whole ceiling 
from the insulation to the drywall had to be replaced. Yeah, and we did a lot of demo work, so it was a lot of exposed areas. And mm -hmm. I mean, there was water in the kitchen. It was yeah. water in the living room. Like the whole house to me flooded. Yeah, it like, did. That was my mindset, that the whole house flooded. And mm -hmm. if you hire somebody to take care of a roof or mm -hmm. just replace it, that means it's their job to essentially ensure that everything is fastened properly. Facts. And that's not what he did. Facts. So what did you do, Darius? We held him accountable. You know, we pretty much was like, look, um, we're, we're not the reason that the that we have to replace these drywalls and insulations. You got to come out of this cost. Yeah. And, you know, at first, of course, nobody want to pay. I believe we might have charged them $2,200. Nobody wanted $2,500. Yeah, okay. Something like that. So... Nobody want to come out of twenty five hundred dollars out of their own pocket right. for a mistake they did. So he didn't want to come off of it. But we were like, but this is why you don't pay nobody fifty percent of the front, front. <laughs> because we had his money. He needed. We had. I think we had like seventy percent. Yeah, seventy percent like, of his money still yeah. in our pockets. Yeah, and the thirty percent of the money he had, he could only pay his contractors with. Right. He couldn't even pay himself. He couldn't even pay his bills. So he really needed to work out a deal with us. Yeah. But if we would have paid him fifty percent, he would have had leverage over us and yeah. really would have been like, eh, whatever, bye. <laughs> and it's you important know? to do people right, but it's business. So like yeah. you just have to figure out what ways to to leverage, like you said. Mm -hmm. I love that word. <laughs> and put that in your contracts. Yeah. You know, put it in your contracts. You are liable you know, for any damages that you do. So we didn't fire him. Nope, we worked out a deal. We worked out a deal. We and stayed on top of him. Stayed on top of him. The deal we worked out was that he didn't actually come out of cost for, he didn't have to give us $2,500. Right. We just took $2,500 out of his budget. <laughs> so instead of him like, instead of we him paying, we paying the whole budget, we just took $25 off the total, total cost. Yeah. All right, so we just had a quick interruption. Uh, one of our contractors that uh, uh, that did a lot of good job, got a lot of good work on his house, just stopped by out of nowhere. Like nobody invited him. <laughs> he's just setting the lights on, roll past because he's done a lot of work on his house, and he's yeah. just like, I want to see the, I want to see the finished product. And he, and he came here and pretty much loved it. Yeah. So I'm saying all I have to say is that yeah, we told y'all some some negatives about some of our contractors, but we really built some good relationships with some good contractors that we're gonna be moving forward with for further projects. Yeah, and that's all it's about, is trial and error, you know, and and luckily you have someone like myself and Darius, but really Darius, that has a positive attitude. I'm always positive. He has- It can be uh, going all the way around. <laughs> I'm like, man, look, <laughs> the house could be on fire right now, but it ain't. And I'm like, okay, well, he's calm about that. Yeah. But really just, you know, having a, a clear understanding of what to expect, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one thing that we didn't get to talk about was um, how our vision changed in the oh, middle yeah. of the project. <laughs> so the vision changed because we really came into this space. I think we underestimated what we needed to do in this space. But the house was already purchased at this point in the game, <laughs> and it was like, you know, for me, it was like, yeah, I can back out now, sell. But for me, it was like, I don't know what's going to come out of this, mm -hmm. but I feel like it will be a great learning experience. I knew we wasn't going to lose yeah. because we looked at the numbers, but I was just like, we really got to do a lot more. We really got to add a lot more value than we think. We yeah. really underestimated the, the rehab cost. I think we really came in here like we really only want to spend 20. Yeah. End up spending like sixty. I don't think twenty was ever our budget. I think our budget was forty. From yeah. The get. End up spending well. I think we might end up spending like seventy five. Yeah. And uh, so the vision changed because we had water damage, and then we had some contractors coming here, and then we seen what was on the market, and the market just was like, if you want to get this margin, and the margin was like one twenty five that we were shooting for, and their stuff was like way nicer. Yeah. You know, I think there were some new um, houses that hit the market too in the process of, of us having it. And that's why yeah. it's so important with time. Yeah. Like most fix and flips, you want to definitely get out of there in 60 days. Yeah. And I think with this one, we had imagined to fix certain parts of the house, but then we end up like literally gutting the entire first floor. Yeah. 
which was not a part of the original plan. It wasn't. I remember when Darius made the decision, we were literally sitting in the living room. Yeah. And my face was like, I tried my best to contain my face, but I was like, oh, you want to knock down more walls? Yeah. Darius would come in here literally every weekend and I would come back and there's a wall that was knocked down, an yeah. entryway that was expanded. I'm like, Darius, get out of this house. Because this house had too many like <laughs> narrow passageways. Yeah. Too many doors like you had to you walk through a door and then when there was another door you had to walk through again. Yeah. it was like come on but it was a lot of potential yeah a lot of potential and it yeah. was like it really like by changing our vision it really showed us what we can do yeah like we didn't think this house i mean i knew it was gonna turn out good no but not this good not this good yeah i ain't even gonna lie to you like i, I literally stopped by <laughs> every day just to like come in here and just chill and sit because I, I love this space like I want to make this my home but I'm an investor and I can't fall in love with deals yeah uh, and yeah. sometimes I was thinking like um, luckily especially with D because he's all in like some investors are not that I've worked with mm -hmm. are not as all in and involved and just really passionate about everything that we were doing I yeah. think it was important for us to get more help because Dia see, Dia see a vision and then within the same week he'll see another vision yeah. and then we end up trying to figure out which vision is best so yeah. um, I think it was important when we end up getting some interior designers as well man the interior designers uh, they came like midway mid project, mid sure. project and it was more so a strategic move which is probably not the best idea no it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> we don't do our deals like that no more like now <laughs> we like we literally got project our interior decorators looking at houses like months before we even start. Yeah. You know, coming up with a layout and everything. So we already got a vision. Yeah. Um, but when we when I when I came up with the idea to get the interior decorators, I just was like, all right, my role and responsibility is operations, execution, funding, you know, making sure things is happening. Deja, she manage the contractors, manage the projects. Like she does an amazing job managing documentation and getting everything in place to, to, to execute. And it was like, we already got a lot on our plates. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like now, how are we going to add, you know, this, this it value to this house when we're trying to focus on actually executing, finishing the house. Well, I'm like, we need experts. And that's why I say like, go for experts, go for people that know what they doing. Yeah, and don't be, a lot of people take these projects so personally that they don't want other people's input. Yeah. Um, but what we found is that those interior designers, um, they fed off of our vision. Yeah. Um, it was a little tricky though, I will say, mm -hmm. because we had already had our mind made up of what we wanted to see this place look like. Yeah. So it was a little tough yeah, trying to completely respect everything that they had to say but mm. i think if the flow was a little bit different where they came at the beginning yeah um but they just make it a lot easier yeah yeah because they picked out material they knew what the countertops was color was going to be they knew what the paint wall was going to look like mm -hmm. the only thing we had purchased prior to was the floor and that's because days fell in love with the floor she said bro we gotta get this floor. I, said, I trust her so much that like <laughs> I, you I didn't be, even see the floor. I didn't even see the floor. I be just making like sight unseen decisions because they they said it was good, so yeah. And I think it's a really good focal point of the house. It is. Yeah, it is. but we ended up doing it pretty much three throughout. We did it throughout the whole first floor. Yeah. Which I don't think that was our original vision. That was the interior decorating. Yeah. Vision. So it really worked out. Yeah, it really like, did. They 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 really, for me, they added value, and I told them I, we set the expectations up mm -hmm. front. Like, look. We don't want to have to baby y'all. We don't want to have to tell y'all what to do. We, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a modern look, a newer look, a clean look. We, I tell people like, for me, how I tell people what I need to get done, I don't tell them what to do. I just tell them how I want to make, how I want it to make me feel. <laughs> and I'm like, when I walk in this space, if I, when I walk through that door, if I don't fall in love with this house, then y'all didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> and they was like, we got it, you we know. It. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and, and I mean, if you find people that um, want to be a part of a team, that's a lot helpful, a lot yeah. more helpful as well. Um, I think in this business, everybody wants to be a boss, but if yeah. you're unable to find, if you are able to find people that are willing to play any role or yeah. play their role, um, it's just a lot. I don't even know what the best word to use, but it it's, it's just more successful. I yeah. would say it is, and it's less stress. 
Yeah. Because I'm worried about execution. You worry about managing the contractors. Like, now nah, <laughs> we don't have to worry about who's going to get the material, who's going to pick out or the Or who's going to pick out certain things. Yeah, who's going who gonna to go, who gonna make the Home Depot runs and get the finishes <laughs> and, and make sure the towel matches the finishes, <laughs> matches the floor, and it's all slow. Certain people just have better education in those yeah. fields, so allow them to prevail. Um, and they just know how to come up with different ideas just like when material was unavailable yeah yeah that's a good one we're gonna get into that too yeah. um so we ended up hiring two interior decorators yeah. two independent contractors uh, so we vet it we always vet and we do our due diligence we leverage social media we pretty much put a job application out there saying we're looking for interior decorators had about five different interviews we like really two of the two good people because for us it's about long term right like yeah we could have just bought one on board but one on board and one one on one person wouldn't have been able to manage 10 properties it, and that's where we're going we're going to looking to do 10 properties at one time yeah so we're like all right if we you know bring in two people we bring them in at the foundation of our business where we, we're just figuring out how to work with interior decorators we can mold them we can like build a great relationship so when we do expand and we grow it's just they're gonna just be boots on the ground and they know what to do already we ain't gonna have to teach them when we got this plans in place you already have like yeah. you said strategic plans in place so that things just flow yeah you know it's just on a bigger scale because now we have more volume yeah so that was awesome uh we love the interior decorators decorators for that and we're we actually have them looking at uh doing other properties for us right now so bathroom so um this project, this, this house was new to all of us. So, well, I've done projects before. Yeah. You know, I've done about four projects, renovation projects, but this was the biggest. So, we had an idea, right? In the bathroom to put a double sink vanity. And it was a great idea. It was a great concept. And we, we, we thought it through in our heads, but when we thought it through and the vanity came, the vanity was super big and the bathroom was super small, so it didn't make sense. Well, what we should have done yeah. was kind of move the layout of the bathroom. Yeah. I think at the beginning, if we had that, because again, we brought the interior designers midway, which yeah. they kind of put the double sink idea out in the air. Yeah. So at the beginning, if we had that idea and if we actually sat down and utilized them prior mm -hmm. to actually renovating, yeah. um, we would have, made some changes on the layout for the bathroom and it would have worked it would have worked but we didn't so it didn't yeah. work <laughs> it didn't work it was too massive how many vanities did we go through so we purchased a huge vanity double sink vanity and then we said okay we know what we did the measurements we went back and measured again we said we can't do two we can do one though and uh, we let's do one. Let's do a 31 inch vanity. You know, I think the first vanity was maybe like almost 60. 60. Inches, <laughs> and five feet long, almost. So we like, all right, let's just do 30. We get the vanity. The vanity comes, and no, the vanity takes forever to, to come. come. Yeah, it took a long time. It took like a month. Yeah, and then it didn't fit. And then it didn't fit. <laughs> so we we our project. So we bought three toilets and three vanities. We tried to make it work, <laughs> like. And this is where like the contractor kind of like the expert. <laughs> so I was literally teaching myself in yeah. the process of yeah. like what works, what fits. Like, dang, this this toilet should have this toilet shouldn't have been this far off the wall. We yeah. should we should have moved it before we put the floor down. Yeah. Not knowing that some people have toilets that are far off the wall. Like, yeah, I never, I really, and it's crazy when you when you actually start rehabbing a house. Uh -huh. Certain things that you don't pay attention to, like. Yeah. I, now that every time I look at every toilet, like, I'm like, it really is not on the wall. Oh, <laughs> you measuring it in your head like that ain't right. <laughs> but yeah, this one I think was like six inches off the wall, so it it, it messed up the vanity uh, leg room. Yeah. So that's why we had to go through so many. Man, it, it didn't make sense. So yeah, the vanity the vanity that we bought it came in, it was literally like you had you had to turn sideways to get through. Yeah. So me. I went to the drawing board. I'm like, when I go to the drawing board, I'm patient. This is why I say, like, don't always be quick to make decisions. Yeah. Like, think it through, ask questions, ask your team questions. If they can't think about it, just like let it ponder and sit and then ask somebody that you feel is more qualified. 
an expert, a contractor, a mentor. And that's exactly what I did. I was literally like, I called a contract and I'm like, look, I got this problem and I don't know how to fix it. I'm like, I don't want to tear the floor up to move the, the toilet because the toilet is too close to the sink, but I, I got to fix it. I can't make this. It won't, it was functionally, it didn't function, it didn't look right. Yeah, I mean, there would have been no way for a grown man to, man. to go into that bathroom and sit comfortably. Facts. <laughs> so, we got a pedestal. Yeah. Um, got a pedestal stool. Um, if you don't know what a pedestal stool looks like, Google pedestal stool <laughs> and then Google a 30 inch van and you could see the total difference. It just doesn't have cabinetry underneath it. Yes. And that, and that helped a lot for the leg what? issue that we were having versus ripping up a floor, yeah. moving plumbing, mm -hmm. putting a floor back down, <laughs> just more money. That's how you go just over budget more, by making mistakes. Just more money. Yeah. And it worked perfectly. Like the bathroom was small before we put the pedestal stool in there. Now it's big. Yeah. Now it's like, damn, I got room. I can, yeah, now I can it's slide spacious. out the shower. You know, <laughs> it just, it, it, it works. Yeah, but there there are situations like that that are hard to fix, that take a little time and some money. Mm -hmm. But then we also had some countertop issues in the kitchen. Yeah. But that one was a little bit easier. We were more so, I think, indecisive on that decision. Mm -hmm. So the countertops, we had a plan, but pricing. Yeah. So we under, I kind of understood where the numbers was gonna come at for the courts, but we started, we did a lot. Like we always do our due diligence. We don't never go with the first price. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna ask six, seven different people because I, I, I got some experience already. I already did my research and I'm like, and I asked people that I noticed in the game and uh, count, like uh, countertops were coming in at like $2,500. You know, I'm just like, that does not make sense. <laughs> I'm like, what we're trying to do, like, it should not cost that much. Yeah. And and they're reaching out to somebody else that that was in the game for a while. They gave us a great contact, ended up getting a contact for $1,200. I'm like, that's it. Yeah, it was a little bit more cost effective and it was not as traditional. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people are crazy over this granite, which is not bad because there's yeah. some really nice slabs of granite. Mm -hmm. But we end up finding quartz, which actually is your I favorite. I like it better, though, <laughs> And to me, it kind of also represented a lot of holistic things too, because quartz oh. is good for the body. Okay, okay, it break it down. Is again. it not? It is. Okay. It is. It is because I wear clear quartz all the time, so <laughs> she she hit my my buttons now. <laughs> so as soon as I saw it, um, I just fell in love with it. It actually, to me, is like a focal point of that kitchen. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's not as standard as what you see in all type of different houses, regardless if it's a rental or a mm -hmm. flip. Um, and it was cost effective. Yeah, it was. Um, and we got a sink. Yeah. So there were some add ons to it. So even though the type of countertop we expected, we didn't get that, but we ended up finding something yeah. better, I think. The interior decorators were a little bit upset. <laughs> uh, but this is why we set the expectations. We tell them, like, you, you have to be flexible in this game. Like, nothing is set in stone. Like, we yeah. had the the reason they were upset. The reason they were upset is because they they did do their due diligence, and I yeah. really appreciate them to go get the the tile, the backsplash tile for the kitchen. Right? Yeah. They already bought it. You know, it was already here, ready to go. Yeah. But it was white. We have a white, a pretty much predominantly white countertop with white backsplash. We just was like, that's a lot. That's of white. not gonna work. What white cabinets? Yeah, no, it was too much white going on. We like we love the white, <laughs> but that's too much white. Yeah. And uh, we had a shift. Yeah, but we, we made some executive decisions and we gave reason behind it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, because a lot of, I, I say a lot of bosses, they'll just make a decision but not, sh you know, let their team in. Yeah, that was good. So it, good. it's about, one thing I will say is these really go with communication. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. helpful with everybody. <laughs> you know, I take that one. But, but we made that change and it worked out really good. I think really, really good. It turned out well. Yeah, it did. So the house turned out great. Um, that's pretty much the renovation project. That was pretty much some of the major challenges that we had, which was uh, just a quick recap, dealing with contractors, uh, having a shift mid project, having a vision for the project, changing extra strategies. Um, we actually 
when we changed our extra strategy, we actually went over budget, which we talked about earlier, because yeah. we really budgeted for 40 grand. Now we end up investing about 75 grand, which the numbers, we still profitable. We still have equity in the deal, but yeah. we would have had a lot more equity, but the deal wouldn't have turned out how we wanted it to turn out. So some, street, some, some strategic financing ways that I was able to keep the deal funding, even though we went over budget was, um, I did leverage a, a 401k. So if you work for a full-time job, you can take out a loan on your 401k. Um, and it's just really just taking out a loan against it. You're not pulling the money out. The money is still investing and you just borrow it against your 401k and you just got to pay it back. So I was short on capital at, at the period of time. I said, I got to make a decision. I got to make an executive decision. I got to keep the project going. I can't stop now with too much invested. So I took out some of um, my 401k and then I used um, some um, business credit cards. So. The business credit cards kind of kept us afloat and kept the project going because I was now able to use, um, I had like a $40,000 business credit card that didn't really impact my personal, but I was still able to fund the deal and keep the project going. So uh, for me, I was able to do that because the numbers made sense. If the numbers didn't make sense, I wouldn't have been able to do that. It was just like, I'm risking too much. But for me, I knew the end goal and I knew what our margin was gonna be at the end of the day. So I'm like, I'm okay with tapping into expen uh, tapping into funds that I didn't really want to tap into in the first place. And you place. purchased it for a low price. We did. So like anytime you, I mean, yeah, the rehab, you have to have revolving money for yeah. rehabs because things happen. You knock down a wall and you figure Man. out that there's like a chimney where it's not supposed to be a chimney, <laughs> like there, especially in Detroit. Yeah. You get a lot of crazy things that you find in houses, but because you got the house so low, yeah. you had a bigger budget and a bigger margin to work with and mm -hmm. still make money. I agree. Uh, next thing is, uh, oh, the, the, the extra strategy. So we wanted to flip. Mm -hmm. So we went into the game saying like, so we initially flip, fix and flip was always a strategy, right? That was always the go-to and that was always the vision for the property because for us, turnover, that's what we want. We want the turnover, we want the quick cash, we want to take the cash back and reinvest it again. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doubling up. Now we're doing two at a time, now we're doing four at a time, now we're right. doing eight. So that was always the go. Um, but being in the space for so long, it just kind of showed me a different vision for the space. And for me, I'm willing to take risks. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a, I'm a risky, I'm not gonna say I'm too risky, but I'm willing to take those chances if I'm able to learn something. So for me, I was able to be creative in this space and turn it into an Airbnb, Yeah. which I, I thought can add a lot of value to the community. People can use it as event spaces. And I just thought the concept was so dope for Airbnb because I haven't seen it in Detroit. It's unconventional. It's unconventional. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, why not try it? Um, let's see how it works. If it doesn't work, the extra strategy always flip it. Yeah. You know, the margins are still there. We're still gonna make our money. So why not just give it a chance, take the risk? And of course, we're still doing other deals anyway, but it's just like, we can create additional cash flow, um, 2,500 a month if this works or more. So that was just one of the extra strategies. And it's always an asset as well. And that's one thing that asset. people think about with homes, you can always leverage yeah. the house itself. Thanks. All right, so quick takeaways for our Littlefield project. One of the pro one of the one of the things I feel like is key. I feel like you definitely want to find credible, reliable, accountable contractors. And that might not happen with the first contractor. <laughs> that might not happen with the second contractor. Keep keep working until you find those contractors that you can build a relationship with. Yeah. Because for us, I feel that business is first. We always treat it business first. We always go back to the scope of work. The paperwork and be like, look, this is what the scope of work says. This is what we need you to do. Yeah. Um, but on the second end, we build a relationship with them. So the relationship helps us come over those challenging situations, which helps it always be a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah, and I think my takeaways for sure would be document everything. Tax. <laughs> That's key. Yeah. Uh, document the littlest thing. Doesn't matter if a guy is coming to change a light bulb, put them mm -hmm. on paperwork um, because 
your perspective is going to be completely different yeah. from anybody's. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I don't remember you said that. <laughs> Trust me, that was a lesson. And we all was on the phone. <laughs> like. So just always document everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then as a project manager and just as an investor, do not be afraid to negotiate. Facts. If, go ahead. I'm just saying, that's key because um, you know what your money looks like. Yeah. Um, and if you have an ounce of knowledgeability when it comes to whatever you're trying to bid, mm -hmm. you'll be able to kind of work and have some wiggle room with the numbers. So do not be afraid to negotiate. Yeah, don't be. I Google everything. I Google YouTube. YouTube <laughs> and sometimes I do the work myself to figure out like, yeah, it might take this long. Yeah. And I ask for help. Yeah. I asked the people that's done it before, that has seen it before, and because they can give me the real world experience of like, okay, I, this is how much it should cost. Yeah. And sometimes people gonna give you them them wild numbers, and you like, nah, I can't pay that. Yeah, just do things with integrity. Yeah. Yep. And then. Um, More takeaways. Pretty much done with that. I got another takeaway. <laughs> Hire experts. Yeah. Hire people that know what they're doing. Do not. Like, so you can cut, I wouldn't say cut corners. I, I feel like that term is uh, poorly used, like poorly said, but like you can figure out ways to uh, save money, mm -hmm. but hire experts that know what they're doing, especially on the mechanicals, which are HVAC, hot water tank, electrical, plumbing. You know, yeah, you can get in here and paint yourself, but hire experts and ask experts for their advice because it will probably save you a lot of money in the long run. You don't want to have to try something and fail at it. And then now that you fail, you got to pay somebody else to do it right. Now you just spent double the money. And one thing I learned from this project is that um, a lot of people are uh, leery of getting permits because they yeah. don't want to spend extra money. But there are some trades that I would recommend getting a permit for because mm -hmm. Um, one thing I guess I did not know until doing this project is that the city can come and inspect the work that the contractor did. Yeah. And that's kind of another precaution for you to make sure that it was done correctly. Yeah. So those are our takeaways. And they're not that expensive. They're not that. It's, so the per permits are based off of the price of the... The job? The price of the job. Okay. So that's why, I mean, I feel like we got some pretty good deals on our, on oh. our, on our costs. Yeah, so that's we what, negotiated. We negotiated. <laughs> and you got to have a great negotiator on your team. <laughs> Always have a great negotiator. When, 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 when it comes down to, like, I can crunch the numbers all day. <laughs> but when it comes down to what we going to get this price at, I call her. People hate me. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't even on the phone. Days, get the price down. And that's what she does. Like, you got to, and that's why you say people that got expertise this is what she does like they just negotiates the price and we're always looking for people to join the team facts Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. i was just gonna say um we're just looking for people that are go-getters people yeah. that um know how to take direction but also take initiative mm -hmm. um to do things on their own um we're always looking for contractors for sure <laughs> and we just want to find people that we can actually rely on where we give you a house and you know exactly what to do when yeah. we call you yeah, and, and be willing to take the, the feedback and knowledge and education because we set the expectations up front and we're always, we like me and Dave's literally on the phone every day. We talk mm -hmm. every day, we give giving game every day. I'm teaching her, she's teaching me, we're teaching the people that we work with, we're teaching contractors, contractors teaching us. Just a family. Yeah, it's kind of like a family. Yeah. Um, so we are looking for um, contractors. You said that already. I had something in my head that I was about to say, but I forgot it already. Um, let's go come. I swear. We're always looking to buy homes, and we're also. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I knew it was gonna come. I was. I was, I was, I was like. For some reason, you can't remember. That I thought it was gonna click. I'm like. <laughs> so if you ever have a house that you want us to come and do a market analysis on to figure yes. out the value of, um, that is a service that that I do yes. for free. Um, so just let us know and. You know, yeah. we, mostly we buying cash. Buying cash. And our goal for 2020 is to create more flips, create more revenue. So our goal, I would say, I, I want to do 20 flips in 2020. So we need a team. 
Um, we're yeah. setting things in place right now. We're liquidating assets. We're getting cash rich. We're going at this hard in 2020, and we need people on our team, right? It's we, gonna be a wealthy year. It's gonna be a wealthy year. <laughs> like we need accountants. We need everybody that can really add value to our team. Um, make sure you follow us on social media. Deja's social media is Deja dot Mac. McKinney? No, it's Deja dot Mac. Yeah. I've always been a Mac. All right. <laughs> you can follow me on social media, all platforms at Mr. Revere. Um, I do give away uh, free knowledge on Thursdays, two sessions of Thursday, so feel free to sign up. Um, and we're very approachable. So very approachable. if you ever need anything, if you have questions, um, we'll definitely find the time to help. Fact. So that's the recap for our Littlefield project. Thank you. We wanted to be able to add value to you all because we didn't want to just show you a space finish and didn't show you how we got there. But we did want to be able to give you some insight on some of the things that we did. Like, because Instagram, what they say, Insta like Instagram is kind of like picture perfect, like yeah. the, the positives of your life and nobody nah, tells you. We want to give you the nitty gritty. Yeah, it tells you like... <laughs> At one point in time, I'm like over here every weekend, no haircut, just like <laughs> at it. Like, oh, we got to win. We got to get it. That's fun. And, 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 and it worked out for us. So I wanted to be able to give y'all that insight to say that it looks good on the surface, but there are some challenges that you're going to have to go through if you really want to be successful in this game. Thank y'all. Peace. <laughs>